Azure Data Factory is built for big data, and mapping data flows brings big data analytics to the tool in a very easy, scalable, serverless spanner. You can build with mapping data flows in Data Factory, you can build code free data transformations that execute on Spark. And so, since we're leveraging Spark and EDF, there's a lot of common patterns that you find in big data platforms and in Spark in specifically that you can implement very easily in mapping data flows that you're going to run into quite often. One of those is when you're working with big data in files in a data lake, is that those files are going to commonly be stored within folder structures that are partitioned folder structures. So that you can store data in Parquet and you can then split those up across uh, different value partitions. So let's, I'm going to walk you through in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to read and write partitioned file folder structures with mapping data flows in EDF. So before I jump into the details of this data flow that I have here, I want to quick show you the folder structure that I have in my um, data lake. So here in my Azure Storage Explorer, I have a folder called part data. And in there, I have a couple of values. I have my data partitioned by a couple of different values. I have a partition by release year and month. So I have 2008 and 2019. In the 2019 folder, I have two different months, month one and month seven. And then in month seven is where I have the, um, uh, the leaf level of that uh, folder tree structure, which is my movies out new dot parquet. So I'm, in this demo, I'm using my uh, classic movies database, which has about 9,000 or so, 9,100, I think it is, rows in it. And uh, in this case, I have it stored, I have the database stored as a parquet file. Let's open the file up and take a look at it. And there's the traditional um, movies database that I used. I do have a few other attributes on here that I have from some other demos that I have been working on. Um, that don't really necessarily apply here, so we can take these values out as we transform the data. But you see the, the titles, the years, uh, so on and so forth, and they will fall into those buckets of the partition data that I have. Now, I'm just storing these all in 2019 just for the demo. Uh, in your case, you're probably going to have uh, many other values within your partition folder structures that you're going to use. But how do you access that then within uh, data flow? So we make it very easy. In fact, we make it a standard built-in part of data flows. What, what happens is on your source transformation when you use a, um, a file, in this case I'm pointing to my Parquet file, so the way you point to that folder structure within source is you use a data set, and that data set here is called Parquet3, and all I point to is my container, that's it. Because what I'm going to do then is within my source options I'm going to use a wildcard. The wildcard will say pull everything from that partition folder structure. So you note know here that I have my container, which is hard coded for my data set. Then I've typed in part data, which is the top level of my folder structure. And then I have the year, the release year, the month, and then all my parquet files. So star star is every folder. So I will get every partition folder from both the year and the month, and I'll get all the parquet files. I need to tell uh, data flows what is the top level, and so it's called part data. And then I also want to store the name of the file as it is found because there's going to be multiple files in there. That should be good enough. Now let's take a look at the uh, data. Let's preview it. And you'll see that there are those attributes that I, have, that I showed you earlier. There's the title. And then also over here on the right-hand side, you'll also see uh, some columns, some metadata that Dataflow has put in for me. So there is the folder 1, which is release here, and then the folder 2, which is month. And so 2019, of course, it also found 2018 in there. This is just a, the preview is a sampling of the data. By the way, you can change the sampling settings on the debug settings. You can increase or decrease the number of rows that come back. But it's showing you also within the file name. So I also stored the file name. If you remember, I set my file name for the name of the file that I want to store the file in. So it, it gives you the full path as well as the file name that each one of these rows is coming from. So you can track the lineage of each of the rows. Now I want to look at... Um, all of the files that fell within the uh, release year of 2019. Now, um, to do that, I need to get access to each of these metadata columns, right? Each of these columns. I do not have any schema set in my data set. If you remember my data set here, I'm just pointing to a container. So there is no schema. This is schemaless. There will be no projection on my source either, no columns to find. So, how do I work with that data? Well, you can see that the data preview is able to sniff out all the columns, and they have this icon here, which is a drifted column icon. 
So I'm going to use the map drifted button. You click that and we will build the mappings for you. So this um, derived column here called map drifted becomes that automatically created derived column. Let me call this something a little bit more meaningful now. Let's call this uh, my projection. So now each one of those drifted columns becomes a hardened column within my data within my um, data flow. And if I go to inspect, I'll see that now I have column names for everything, including the release year and month. Now what I can do is I can filter that. So I can use a filter transformation and I can say, give me only the the, the um, rows from the parquet files found within release year 2019. Again, release year is not part of my data, but data flow sees it as that because it's metadata from the name of the partitioned folder. Let's do one real simple transformation on it. This is my favorite to do, just do a reverse of the title so that we know that we actually transform that data. And we can do a data preview on that. We'll be able to see that the uh, title will be um, successfully uh, reversed. And then over on the sync, we will see what the final values are going to look like when they land. And for mapping, I'll just say map everything. So because um, I have schema drift on, no schema uh, define. It's a good idea to do um, to set auto mapping so that all the columns that come in or that may change will get landed in the new parquet files at the end. Now to keep a partition structure in your sync, so to write the partition structure, what you have to set is, by the way I'm using clear folder so I'm cleaning out any of the left behind um, files from the Spark execution and then over here in optimize, I am setting the partition type of key. So key partitioning will partition the files based on these keys. Remember, my keys were release year and month. So it will maintain this folder structure for me at the end. Okay. So as we looked at the data preview, the data all looks right. There's my reverse title. So I think we're set. So now we're going to go over to the final step in your building your data flow, which is you execute it from a debug in a pipeline. So I have my data flow right here as a single activity in my pipeline. I have my debug setting on. And so now I can click the debug button here and that will execute the data flow. And in about a minute, this will complete end to end. And we will see the files over in the end. So I'm going to pause for about a minute. Okay, we're back. Uh, my execution took two minutes, not one minute, so I apologize for that. That's fine. So let's take a look at our execution plan, and everything looks like it was fine. It, the execution within Spark actually only took seven seconds. The rest of the time was job setup and cluster acquisition. And we ended up with uh, two different partitions, which is what I had set in the key partitioning, so that looks absolutely correct. And there was a number of rows that I said we had, so everything looks fine. Now, uh, the folder I'm writing to from my sync, you'll see, is this data set right here called uh, called Parquet Out. And if you take a look at that, I'm going to my container slash output slash Parquet. When you type in folder names in here, EDF will automatically generate, create those folders that don't already exist. So let's go back over to Azure Explorer. And that was output, parquet, and there you go. There is release series 2019. There are the months. We updated uh, the file for month seven. And there is the parquet file that it created right there. So let's go ahead and open that up and make sure that it has the reversed titles in it. Sorry about that. And there it is. Uh, it has reverse titles, and we're good to go. So that is how you read and write partition folders, files within Mapping Data Flow.